Hi there, welcome back to the Maria Montessori Project. I'm Suzanne Ross and I haven't given you an update in a little bit about my uh, my writing project on um, about Maria Montessori. I'm working on trying to turn her life into some script slash play that will be able to be dramatized on the stage. Um, and I've been very busy working on that and talking with people that I know in the theater and trying to write out some scenes and really getting deep into the research of what we know about her personal life. And what I want to do today is share with you a little bit about what I, what was going on behind the scenes um, for Maria in the early years of her career, the kind of story that is a little bit scandalous and was kind of hidden um, from public view during most of her life, but which I think really humanizes her and takes her, um, you know, out of the realm of just a historical figure um, and makes her a person that we can we can all relate to. So. Um, Early in her career as a medical doctor, she was working with a colleague, um, Dr. Giuseppe Montesano. Um, he was about two years older than she, and they worked together at a psychiatric clinic in Rome. And they were working with um, institutionalized children. So at that time, um, Anyone with a learning disability uh, that we would now, uh, you know, involve in early intervention and intense educational um, interventions, um, they were institutionalized. So the mentally retarded or um, anyone with any kind of mental deficiency and even um, delinquent children, vandals, beggars, you know, truants, anyone who was incorrigible, was also thrown into an institution. And they were housed with adults as well. So the criminally insane, the violent insane, the catatonic, uh, you name it, uh, whatever age you were, you were all thrown together into a institution, an asylum. And uh, Maria and Giuseppe were working on... Um, interventions, educational interventions, using methods that had been used with um, the blind and the deaf um, successfully by scholar, by doctors um, and educators in France. And they were experimenting um, in Italy. They were taking kids out of the institution and working with them in their clinic. And they began to show tremendous results and their so-called deficient children were outperforming the kids in the normal schools. And Montessori wrote a paper. They were both publishing together, um, but she wrote a paper that became quite a sensation in Italy. It went out of print. It was reprinted again in the magazines and so forth. And she was invited to speak at a Congress, a gathering of uh, ed teachers and educators from all over Italy at Turin in, um, in Italy. And there were about 3,000 people uh, in attendance there. Now, I am very focused on that conference, and I want to sort of have that event be central in the opening of my play, of my script, especially because at this time it was at the height of her fame and she was becoming known as a educator of deficient children not normal children yet just the who the children who were considered unfit for normal school and she was um, quite a sensation and it was at this time that she became pregnant from an affair with Giuseppe Montesano and about six months before the Congress at Turin, she delivered a son, Mario. And um, it is a bit of a mystery uh, what actually went on 
between Giuseppe and Maria in terms of their arrangements for the son. We kind of know how babies are born. But what they ended up doing was giving Mario up to be raised by a family in the countryside outside Rome. Now, this was not um, necessarily a typical thing or, or something encouraged at the time. Um, apparently, the, the mores at the time in Italy, unlike in other countries, in Italy, because of the influence of the Catholic Church, pregnant women who were pregnant out of wedlock were required to keep their pregnancy a secret. This is what the church teaching was. Keep your pregnancy a secret, and then when the baby is born, surrender the baby to one of the institutions run by the church. They were called, um, let, me, let me get this right, they were called, I think, turnstiles. Uh, I'm not sure why, probably because of the look of the door. Um, where, where you would drop the baby off. They were called tur turnstiles or wheels, these foundling institutions run by the church. The reason that the church wanted the secrecy was to protect the unborn child from being got rid of in a less than caring way. So um, the, the church then as now teaches against abortion and against infanticide which would be a, uh, a recourse for women who would be dishonored um, if they had a child out of wedlock. Um, so um, Maria and um, Giuseppe being doctors, and this is one of the things that isn't discussed in any of the biographies, but it's a question I have. Um, both being doctors, it seems to me they could easily have aborted the pregnancy if they had wanted to. So clearly they did not want to give up this child so um, or lose contact with it in any way. So apparently what seems to have happened is that they made a deal with each other that they would give the child up to be raised by someone else, but they would stay involved with the child's life and they would not marry either each other or someone else. Because also in the, in the cultural mores of the time, for um, a woman to marry meant she left the workforce. It just was what happened. And Maria was the first woman doctor in Italy. She was, her career was just taking off. She was um, at the forefront of feminism movement and education reform. And she was at this Congress at Turin hoping to transform the education system or be part of a transformation of the education system in Italy. So I, d I felt like, I feel as if she felt like she was just about to have some great impact on the world. And she didn't want to give that up, but she also didn't want to give up her child. Interesting, right? So they came up with this compact. Um, and and what's, what I'm just very happy to be writing about Montessori at this time is that her great-grandchildren have just, um, in the last few years, um, started to publish private papers um, of Maria's that are um, housed in um, Amsterdam where she spent a good portion of her life and um, part of what they're they're acknowledging is this uh, arrangement with Giuseppe and her great-granddaughter writes in this introduction to a diary that Montessori kept on her first trip to the United States in 1913 um, uh, Montessori writes, uh, Carolina Montessori writes that her great great grandmother um, had this arrangement with Montesano, um, but he, Giuseppe, may have agreed to it, sort of hoping Maria would change her mind, right? Um, he was a very famous man himself and he actually went on to have an incredible career and become um, the deputy mayor of Rome 
Um, and when he passed away, um, he was actually given a state funeral. So he was, you know, an ambitious man himself and a politician. And it's my speculation that um, he needed a wife. You know, he's like in politicians today. Uh, it pays to be married and be able to show yourself as a family man and so forth. So apparently... Um, he got tired of waiting for her or whatever happened, I don't know. But three years after this, the birth of Mario and, and this Turin um, conference, um, Giuseppe gained full and sole custody of the child. And within a week or so of gaining custody of Mario, he married somebody else. And this is in 1901. So... Um, Mario was born in, I think, like March of 1898. The Congress in Turin was in uh, July, I think, in the summer. Um, and three years later, um, Montessori loses, you know, any kind of influence over her child's life. And she basically withdraws from her career. And she spends a year or two uh, withdrawn, going back to study. She describes it uh, in, in, in her public uh, discussions of it as a um, going back to learn more about psychology and education because she was being called more into understanding how her methods with deficient children would work with normal children. So um, many people, you know, are speculating how could she have been pregnant in 1898 when she was so public and working in the clinic. She had a private practice. She was speaking. She was going, you know, as a feminist speaking at conferences. How could she have hid the pregnancy then? Some people speculate that it was in 1901 that she was pregnant because she withdrew from public life. However, um, on Mario's birth certificate, her son's birth certificate says March uh, 31st, 1898, and that's the birth date he gives. And he explained that his mother's withdrawal from public life was because she felt so betrayed by Giuseppe. So I am working on um, my, my play, of dramatizing my play and weaving in the impact of what was going on in her private life with what was happening in her career. And um, I'm enjoying it thoroughly and having fun doing the research. And um, as I make more progress, I will keep you up to date. Thanks for listening.